Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Croc, Curved Road Only Challenge, where we build a traffic efficient and good looking city using only curved roads. Today we will be focusing on this part of the city that you see on your screen, which is going to be a low density residential layout. In this video we will be planning the entire road network, public transport accesses, cycling roads and pedestrian pathways. To make sure that when we start zoning here, placing unique buildings, monuments and unique assets, we will have perfect traffic flow with no issues. So without further ado, let's start. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do in order to plan the layout for this new district is think about traffic and traffic flow and accesses because as you guys know, traffic management is the most challenging part of playing this game and there is nothing worse than build your entire district just to see it suffer from terrific traffic congestions and having to delete everything to build a better layout. So that's something that we can start thinking ahead. And for this particular layout, um, there's three points that need attention. First is this circular road inside the district, which is, which is going to be the main uh, collector road, which will grab traffic from all the different houses and commercial zones inside this district and bring it to this uh, road here, which is the second point that needs attention, which is the main arterial that uh, collects traffic from the collector road and takes it to the highway and to other parts of the city. Then finally, we have a third point, which is this um, train track. So we'll have to provide a, a train station here so that people can travel to this district via a train. This train track in particular will connect this district to the industrial district here, uh, because I'm gonna place another um, passenger train station in this area here. And we'll also connect to uh, other parts of the city, namely this area over here, which is going to be the most uh, dense and heuristic part of this entire region, of this entire map. Also, this track connects directly to outside of the city, so it's an outside connection. So this is going to be a good uh, point or a good area to attract tourists. So just in case we want to do that. It's not going to be a main touristic area, it's going to be mostly residential, but we can also place some touristic attractions just to generate um, some more revenue. That said, the first thing that I want to do is figure out how these three uh, segments are going to interact with each other. So we already have a connection here. This is going to be a major uh, traffic point. We we'll predict that we'll have a lot of traffic activity in this particular junction. I think what we can do is add an additional connection between this local road to this arterial um, somewhere around uh, this part of the map. This arterial will eventually bridge over the river and uh, connect to this side of the, the map here and perhaps even have its own highway connection. In this second connection between the uh, local road and also the arterial, we can place our train station. With this, the train station will have an easy access for not only this local road, but also this arterial. Now, I have been taking a look at different train stations and I think the one that I wanna use is this one the elevated dual island uh, platform train station because it looks pretty good so if I place it uh, over here you can see uh, first and foremost it has this circular um, parking lot which I think looks amazing and it really fits the theme of the city of having only curved roads and I'm just gonna disable it so we don't uh, have any additional maintenance costs with this and it also has two different platforms or two different lines and I'm thinking one of them can be used for local lines. So the lines that we manually place that provide access to different parts of the city. And the other one can serve as regional lines and also industrial lines, cargo lines. So this particular train station comes with a content creator pack. On top of my head, I don't remember which one. But if anyone remembers, feel free to... Um, let me know in the comment section for other people who might want to have it as well. But one thing about this um, train station is that it's elevated and we've uh, put the train track over here at a, a lower level, at the terrain level. So 
we need to rebuild this and that's something that we can do right now so first and foremost i'm gonna delete this and now we can go and fetch this height level and make a connection here and i think it's a full block from this uh, this road so if we do something like this i think we can make a perfect uh, connection yeah and i think that that works out fine and this gives us a good benchmark to now place our train station and i think so let me just figure out um the size and the space that i'm going to need so i think this road this segment right over here is actually the perfect length but i need to adjust it a little bit and add a bit uh, more guidelines so that we can perfectly center the platform so do this and i think that will be enough and yeah there we go i think it's perfectly centered and also perpendicular to the road so we can now delete these segments and place and relocate our platform okay and this is where it will be now we can go ahead and connect it to the segments no need to be perfect just a regular curved road and it will um, look great yeah, I think this is I think this is okay. Another thing of this train station is that it has this uh, note on the parking lot. So if you're using mods like Anarchy, you can actually continue the roads and make um, a bigger uh, parking lot by extending it. But we are not going to do that. We just need to figure out a way of connecting these uh, junctions. So we can test, I think, a regular roundabout first. So if you take the measurement here, this is 180. If you go 180 here and 180 here as well, we can make a perfect circle. Now I wonder how does something like uh, this will work. Okay, uh, yeah, it doesn't look half bad. Now we just need to find a way to connect it here. Okay, sure, I think we can work with something like this. Let's figure out the rest of the layout and perhaps we can adjust this in the future but overall I think it works fine because the train station now has access to uh, both this um, collector here and also this arterial uh, instead of having all the train traffic converge into this single intersection perhaps we can add a second connection here so something like this, this way people can uh, access the train station from two different points. It's not really symmetric, so perhaps we can uh, do something like this and make a curve go the opposite angle, just like what we have here. But uh, let's figure out the rest of the layout first. For the neighborhoods themselves, I'm going to use the same circular layout that we have used here on the Emerald uh, District. So I am going to go, let me see, what's uh, the distance that I'm using here. So I think it's 11 tiles, so at the cost of 220, and that will be here. I think this is it. And this should get us a perfectly circular uh, shape. All the way here. And let's do the same on the inside as well. So 220, it's here. And let's add another zoning block. So all of these uh, connecting segments should have a cost of 220, assuming I've done uh, this correctly. 
Uh, yeah, but it seems to be working out fine. I think in the future we can break the grid by deleting some rows or changing s stuff up. But um, for the time being, I'm just gonna fill this entire space with a with regular circular layout that we've been building. Now that we have the basic shape, we can delete these straight connecting lines and replace them with the curvy ones that we have been using throughout uh, the entire series. So let's do that. Over here we cannot go with the predefined angle, so I'm gonna cheat a little bit and disable the guidelines and tighten the angle a little, a little bit, but nobody will notice that. We just need to make sure that we can upgrade it to a wider road, and yes we can. Now that the layout of this district is more or less defined, we can talk about the zoning and the plans that I have for this particular neighborhood. So as I've mentioned, this area is going to be mostly residential, namely low density residential. Citizens will still have a need for some shopping, so I'm thinking we can use this long circular collector road to place some small shops here and there, so people can do their daily groceries. This area right alongside the river is going to be amazing for some luxury residential with a sea view or a river view in this um, particular scenario. Or we can even make a park that goes alongside the river and we can extend it to uh, both shorelines because we still have this shoreline to fill as well. On the center we can have a small monument, I'm still not sure what. And to complement it, we can put some more local shopping or even some offices here, as I think it will be fitting. There will be a straight connection between this area to the train station as well, so tourists have an easy time to get from the station to this local, uh, more commercial and touristic area. I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with this uh, area here. Uh, perhaps it will be used for some facilities that take a large amount of space, such as, uh, for example, cemeteries. And this area next to the train station, I want to keep relatively traffic free, so that uh, the only vehicles coming here are people who want to use the train station, but perhaps we can place some small shops as well, for convenience. The accesses here uh, still need to be um, redefined, because we have these straight lines uh, that we cannot have and must be deleted. But overall this area is going to be mostly low density, I want it to be relatively traffic free because the only major road intersections are going to be these two ones on the bottom side. This area in the middle is going to be relatively traffic free with only local trucks and vehicles. So this is mostly going to be an area where people can walk freely and children can play outside without worrying about traffic. But before we start zoning, there's something that we need to address, which is walkability. As I've mentioned on previous videos, I want people to cross from this district to this one relatively freely. I don't want someone who is in this building here ever having the need to get into his car to come to a park over here, for example. So we need to add several pedestrian bridges to make that possible. Another thing that I also want to bring to this part of the shoreline is the main cycling road. Perhaps we can split the cycling road, crossing the river and cutting through the entire district and providing cycling access to all the buildings here and then finally connecting to the train station. That is going to add an enormous amount of travel options for the people living here. So let's start with that. I will be placing pathways and cycling roads right next to the roads, so in order to prevent situations where we cannot upgrade the roads without deleting the pathways that we've built, I'm going to upgrade the roads first. Okay, so now the entire layout is uh, upgraded with roads with trees, and I've placed these very tall trees. 
in some occasions. You will notice that I did not place those tall trees in these segments here, in this particular ring. And the reason for that is that we are going to add an elevated uh, cycling road, which will cut this ring in half. And because we already have all of these roads built, we are left with these very neat guidelines that we can use to make our cycling lane. So if we take the center of all these intersection nodes, we can build a perfectly symmetrical uh, circular segment, which would be something like this, if we connect to the other uh, end. But I think we want to make it a bit tighter, so we are we can go like two blocks or two uh, different steps to the inside so that we make a tighter circle. So starting with the segment here and now we can fill this entire area. Let's see if we can make this work. Okay, yeah, I think that is good enough. And for accesses, we can grab this node, and hopefully I won't mess this up, but I think we can make a curve here and then bring it all the way to the ground level. Let's just uh, disable the guidelines for that and do something like this. And yeah, that looks very neat. I think that's going to work just fine. So we just need to add that to every single segment. The cycling road now has access on every single block. So wherever you are, you can hop onto the cycling road. We will perhaps not use all the circle that we have. But uh, for the time being, let's keep it as is. The way I've built the cycling road uh, kind of takes away the zoning space from um, one of the rings, but that's okay because that can serve as a separator between a touristic part and the monument in the center from the residential district on the outside. We need to connect the um, cycling road to the train station and we also need to make a connection here, crossing the river and connect to this main cycling road. And for that, I think I'm going to get rid of um, this connection because we will need to build a global pathway here. Okay, so I'm happy with this wavy pattern here. Now we just need to cross the river. We've managed to cross the river, still not sure about this shape, but uh, we'll see what we can do with it. We can also delete this road because we don't need that connection there. And uh, let's try making a couple of guidelines here. Let me just check the elevation. I think that's about right. That doesn't bother me at all. So now we just need to connect these two segments together. Okay, there we go. So there's some slight elevation changes across the river, but uh, um, I don't know. I, I actually kind of like it, to be honest. It, it's more dynamic and more fluid. It adds another level of depth, I think. So we'll keep it for now. We can always change it later on. You know what? I think I've just found an alternative. I think this shape for a cycling pathway it might be more direct so you don't have to ruin your steering wheel when going through this uh, road and crossing the river. And it also looks more striking from above, I think. We just need to adjust the height levels here. And this way we can re-add the connection that we had here. And as for this part of the map, 
for this connection we can delete these roads and perhaps do the same thing by deleting this segment how about something like this let me just upgrade these roads just to make sure that we can put all the pathways that we want this thing will have to come to the ground level and look at this i think we can add the access directly from uh, the back side so perhaps instead of connecting to the front we can connect it to the back make a connection here and the connection there connect the cycling lane here and now we can do something along the lines of um, maybe this and this as well we need to unpause the simulation and see if it actually works but I'm pretty sure people can uh, cross here because there's a direct connection so for the rest we need to complement the segments that we have destroyed so i think we can do something like this and the same thing here so maybe we can rebuild the segment here and then connect it over here and for the other cycling road that i've mentioned perhaps we can have a shape that's something like this so in order for us to make a segment that has this shape, we'll have to go by parts because there's a lot of things in the middle here. So we can start off by making a first segment that goes all the way here, I think. And now we just have the train track in the middle, but that's okay because we can elevate it. So we can just delete it for now and bring the second lane all the way here. Okay, now we just have to uh, fix the train track, so let's just take care of that. Get the right node and go another step up, and this should be enough. Uh, yeah, look at that. And that's a pretty realistic clearance. Cool. With the main cycling network planned, we can now start thinking about pathways. Not for bicycles, but for, you know, for walking. I think I want to use these red amusement park pathways and see how they look. And uh, the first thing that we must do is provide walking access between uh, this train station to uh, the zoning blocks. So, uh, I don't know, let's go about here. and go at a distance of perhaps 100 and we can make a circle here okay so we can have this gigantic thing in the center this gigantic plaza i think it will look um, very imposing and very cool and now we can make the connection here and also we can replicate it on the other side as well as for the pathway network i think i want to make pathways that go alongside these crossing roads and i think i want to do it for the entire uh, neighborhood so let's do that and see how it looks so for that i want to hug the um, road as close as possible so something like this and the same thing on the other side okay yeah that's good enough to me and people still have to go through the crosswalks to cross the roads but um, at least these heads wider spaces for people to walk on 
at least realistically that's how I think it would work. Also, quick shout out to the channel sponsors. Thank you so much for supporting the series and helping the channel grow. Okay guys, so I have just finished placing all the pathways in the area that I was envisioning and I gotta admit, perhaps I went a little bit overboard with that. Um, I think we might have a bit too many pathways and we will eventually perhaps need to demolish some of them. But uh, just to give you a quick recap of what I have done. So first and foremost, I've built all of these orange or, or red pathways that go alongside the same shape as these crossing uh, roads like i've said i would do then right here in the middle i've put this interesting shape even though we'll have to um demolish it or adapt it in the future because when we place the central monument here or the central unique building we will need uh, to extend one of the road accesses or one of the road segments so that, you know, um, the building actually has a direct connection to it. But for the time being, this serves as a decoration central point. With this um, kind of turbine design, which I think um, is perhaps a little bit unnecessary, a little bit overpowered, but it looks cool and goes along the, the theme and the overall visual aspect of uh, this district. Then, um, besides that, we also have this very organic uh, zone, this entire section here um, with organic and grey curved pathways. And this is just me trying some stuff out. As I've said, I still don't know what I'm going to do here. Perhaps I'll play some cemeteries, which occupy um, a large portion of space or even I don't know, perhaps these park maintenance buildings, which are also quite big and will um, require me to delete a lot. Oh, look, this, this would actually be a good place for it. Very, very um, fitting. But uh, anyway, perhaps I'll have to demolish some of these pathways in the future. But for the time being, they can stand as they are right now. I've also added this little uh, segment, this little block just to take advantage of uh, as much zoning space as uh, possible so we can kind of make a, a friendly neighborhood here for the time being while we figure out what we want to place here but overall all of these pathways serve to add different access points between um, opposing roads so for example this road over here someone who lives here who wants to come to this road can simply take this pathway here and on the other side we have this segment that connects this end of the avenue all the way to this um, to this junction this entire network with a pathway that goes under the bridge i've also added a lot of connections here and i've even converted one of the cycling lanes to uh, a pathway so now not only do people have cycling access to the backside of the train station, they also have walking access as well. Initially all of these pathways were orange, orange pathways, but uh, I gotta admit they, it was a lot of orange for me, it didn't look very very well, so I've converted all of them to uh, grey pathways, the regular ones. And we can have the central area, you know where people will actually live and buildings will be actually zoned as the orange pathways. There is also one thing that we still need to do regarding pathways, which is 
uh, adding the bridges crossing the river. And what I think we can do is take advantage of these segments here and pretty much just um, extend them all the way across the river. That way we'll have a lot of different options for people to come to this district. Okay, so I think I figured out a way of doing this. If we have a straight line going through across the river, we can make a 45 degree angle like this and connect to the um, point on the exact same distance on the other side. And we can do the same thing on the other side, so 45 degree angle something like this and now we can do something interesting like a connection here for example and this can be our bridge or maybe even something like this this can be our bridge how about that it's um i don't know it's different um not really sure how I should feel about this. Let's just uh, replicate this design everywhere else and see if we can work with it. Okay, so we have these four lightning bolts that will serve as connections between uh, both sides of the river. I've also went ahead and finished off this connection. So I think it looks alright, is this wavy pattern that eventually connects to the, to the layout here and I've replicated it to every single uh, connection. They're not exactly symmetrical, so as you can see this one is a bit different than this one But I don't think they have to be absolutely perfect and match exactly to one another So I'm, I'm satisfied with with the way they are as for the connection here. I still um, Haven't finished. I'm still thinking what I'm gonna do um, Because perhaps I will turn this area into a park into a coastal park and these pedestrian pathways will connect directly to it and then um, of course in the future I can also make some bridges and go across the highway and connect to uh, the residential neighborhood itself as well so but that will be material for another video because for now we're just focusing on this part of uh, the city but anyway guys that's going to be it for today I hope you have enjoyed this video if you want to see if this layout has actually turned out to be traffic efficient and very walkable, make sure to subscribe and follow the development of this city. Thanks so much for watching, take care and as always, have fun.